to do mixing greens um, because it's always better to mix your greens than use a tube green. And the reason for that is color harmony. The yellow that you use somewhere else in your painting will be used in that green. Um, the blue that you're using in your sky will be used in a green. So you will get some good color harmony. Uh, never use a tube green alone. Always use, uh, always mix it. So especially Viridian, Viridian green. I can always tell when somebody has used Viridian green in their painting because it just screams Viridian green. It's like phthalo blue. If you use it right out of the tube, you can tell they've used it. And um, same thing with sap green. Um, it's just, it just screams tube green and it's not as natural and you can't play with your temperatures quite as much. That's my opinion. So um, I'm painting on this piece of paper today. Um, this is my demo paper from when I'm teaching. And I haven't put out my paint yet because I'm going to show you all the colors I have. Um, a lot of these colors I don't use anymore. Um, I'll start off with my yellows. Um, my basic is transparent yellow oxide which is almost the same as uh, raw sienna, only it's transparent. Um, so it's a good neutral earth tone. Then we have yellow ochre, which is an opaque earth tone, kind of disgusting. No, I don't use it anymore. Um, Naples yellow, which is a soft golden sunny color. Nickel yellow, which is a, um, a cold, uh, opaque yellow. It's got a lot of white in it um, and it's uh, touch green. So, and then we have lemon. This is azo lemon, which is slightly more um, transparent than using a CAD and about one third of the cost. If anybody likes CADs, uh, you can use that. You have to use more of it. Um, this is an azo yellow deep and this is CAD medium. Now you can tell how old this tube is. I don't think I've ever even opened it. Let's look at it. <gasps> look at it. It's never been opened. Um, I wonder if I have one that's open. I'll see if I can find one. Does anybody want to buy it? It's real. Real CAD. Stevenson's. And uh, so those are my yellows. Oh, the other one, a staple is Indian yellow, which is a very, very hot um, yellow. It's bordering on orange. Um, so if you were looking at the um, color wheel, it would be somewhere between the red and the yellow. <laughs> okay, that was stupid. Okay, so um, then I have all my blues. Sorry, I've just got a mess here. Um, standard blues, ultramarine. Uh, manganese blue, which is your most transparent. Um, a turquoise. I have two turquoises. This is Camas turquoise. This is a Stevenson Thalo turquoise. I still prefer the Stevensons. Uh, it's stronger. Um, this is real cerulean blue. Uh, it's always a good staple um, to have on your um, palette. I don't use it anymore. Um, this is probably about $98 a tube. Um, Thalo blue which I don't generally use. I've just put it back in my, on my palette a little bit. This is a Stevenson's Thalo Cerulean, uh, which is a beautiful color. Nobody else makes it. I wish somebody would make it again. Um, this is a Cama Sonmore's Blue, which is a uh, pre-mixed color. I don't know if you can see it. It's really, really pretty, very pretty. I hate these lids. Okay. Then there are our two favorite colors that I like. And one of them is uh, blue gray. Um, and it's an opaque and Besner blue number one, which is also an opaque. Most blues other than your thalo and manganese and ultramarine are opaque or semi-opaque. Ultramarine is a semi-opaque. So most of them are more opaque. There are more transparent yellows um, than there are transparent blues. As far as I know, I could be wrong. I don't know everything. It's called green gold, and it, it is by law a tube green, but to me, it's more of a yellow color. It's very acidic, it's wonderful. And I, you can't really mix it. I mean, you can try and mix it, and I'll teach you how to try and mix it, but it actually has its very own pigment in it. It is as azomthine as, as, as yellow 56. Pigment yellow 129. So it is actually a yellow. So, and 
Of course, if you're mixing greens, you need a red. So I have transparent orange, which is fabulous. That's a gambling color. Um, quinacridone violet and quinacridone red, um, which are all transparents. If you want to, you could try a CAD, um, but you're probably just going to get some nasty mud if you do that. I know a lot of people use them, um, but the transparents are fabulous colors. They should be on your palette. Learn how to use them. Um, they're a fairly new paint, like newish is in the last 50 years. The reason uh, is that they're man-made, so they're a dye pigment. So they have very good staying power. Most of them are stainers. Most transparent colors are stainers. So you can use that to your advantage or disadvantage. Again, that is learning how to use your paint. Um, and you can look at the color wheel all you want and take lessons, but the only way you're gonna learn how to use to mix green paint is to squish out the colors and mix them. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll try and mix everything here. It's kind of kind of tricky. Um, oh, and white, of course. Now I'm, I'll use titanium white because it's the most basic. I have switched to Winton titanium white because it's nice and soft and buttery, or the soft mixing white. Um, I'm finding Camas white is too hard now, um, so I don't use it as much. Um, okay, so I'll use the cobalt genuine. It's not on my palette. Um, you know how colors go on and off your palette, right? Um, one of the best practices you can do is when you're out and about painting is forget, forget it to be your favorite color. You'll panic, but you'll learn how to deal with it and, and how to um, try and mix that color. Um, so I will squish out, let's see, what will I start with? Um, reds, or sorry, yellows up here. <clears throat> And will I go lighter, lighter to warmer, lighter to darker to warmer? I don't know. So this is nickel yellow and I'm just putting out little tiny bits because um, I didn't want to waste a panel on doing this. Um, this is lemon. Now I'm finding I'm using more of the nickel than the lemon, but again, it depends on the subject I'm painting. So then uh, Naples. Now, every pigment can be different in every brand of paint. So Naples in Cama is very different than Naples in um, Windsor Newton or um, anything else, right? So I like to open the tube and look at the paint. So Cama is a beautiful, um, this is yellow ochre, which I don't even know. It won't come out of my tube. Let me see if I can find one that's open. Probably not. I haven't used it in so long. Um, yellow. Yellow. Let's try this tube. You can tell I don't use these colors. I don't have any hot yellows on my palette. Um, part of being a competent artist is learning your weaknesses. That's azo yellow deep. Let's try azo yellow middle too, um, which should have been here between the two. I don't have these two on my palette because I'm heavy handed with yellows. I shouldn't be allowed to play with them. Um, I go in too much and then my paintings are too hot. Um, I just don't. Uh, my paintings tend to be more to the cool palette. So that is Indian yellow. See how orange that looks on here? Everybody can see the uh, palette now. So this is the Gamblin Transparent Orange. And then I'm going to go to Quinacridone Red. Oh, ooh, I forgot one. Hang on. Quinacridone Red. I'm going to run out of room. I'm going to put my earth tones down here. So this is transparent yellow, which I should put more of out. It is a staple. Um, I highly recommend everybody put it on their easel palette thing. Quinacridone magenta, which is very purple, very pretty. Now, um, alizarin crimson, which I don't use. I don't even have a tube anymore, I don't think, um, is 
transparent yellow oxide, which will go down here. Um, so those are from light to dark. And these are the transparents, these are opaques. Um, I'm gonna stick green gold up here in the top corner because it's kind of a, a little oddity on its own. It looks very green. So um, put these in here. So then I will start putting out blues. I know I could have done this ahead of time, but you know, that'd be too easy, right? So blue gray, which is an opaque. So this is Besner blue number one. Now this is a camo mix color. I think it's like a radiant blue. Of course, these are all oil. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It is a beautiful baby blue. It is just gorgeous. It does have phthalo in it. A lot of my favorite blues have phthalo in them. Okay, then this is the phthalo turquoise. Now I'll, I'll put out both cameras and um, uh, Stevenson's phthalo turquoise. Canvas is kind of wimpy. Um, they do make a cobalt turquoise. Is this cobalt turquoise? No, this is turquoise light. And then this is Stevenson's Thalo Cerulean Blue. Real cerulean, so cerulean blue, genuine. Ooh, that's oily. This is manganese. And I'm probably going to have to put out more of it just because it is so wimpy. I'm trying to go by... Um, value here. This is cobalt blue. And that is an opaque phthalo and ultramarine. This is phthalo. Very oily. The transparent colors are oily, uh, which is nice, because um, you don't need to use medium or anything. And of course, the old people ultramarine. Is is to have when you're mixing your colors, a paintbrush for light colors and a paintbrush for dark colors. Okay. Because when you're changing temperature, you can do it with a dark brush. But if you dipped into white, then you're contaminating your brush, right? So always have two brushes, one for light colors, one for dark colors. You can tell that this one was used for, sorry. <laughs> this one uh, is quite red. It was used for uh, red colors. It actually stained the, it stained the uh, thing, the hairs, right? So after a while, you can tell, uh, you know, which brushes you use for light and dark. Okay, so, um, oh, and white I will put down here in this corner. So I do not use all these colors in every painting, obviously. The ones that I use the most are transparent yellow oxide, transparent red. Um, I'm not using as much Indian lately because it doesn't play nicely with me. Um, and I use these three lemon. I never ever use um, medium and uh, dark, cad medium and dark. I, they're just too hot for me. I don't like them. Um, but that's me. Okay. So the, um, okay, I'm just going to mix it up here on its own and I'm going to mix it with a bit of white. Now, again, it's hard. Monitors suck. It's the problem with Zoom. So it's a very acidic, it's probably beige looking. Um, you can play around with it one way or the other, right? So if you add a little bit of transparent yellow to it, um, then you kind of get the color of uh, dead cedar trees. Um, you know, cedar trees in the winter, mm -hmm. they're very acidic. Um, you can also, if you don't have green gold, you can mix lemon yellow with some um, transparent yellow oxide, and that will give you that acidic color, right? Because it's cool. Next one I'm going to do is, this is um, nickel yellow, which you can see is quite light. It's got a lot of white in it. Uh, it's cool, but it's also acidic. It's got a bit of green in it. So if I mix it with, um, this is the blue gray. So there you have a uh, kind of a cool, nice spring green. So it's kind of a light spring green, this one, okay? So next one with nickel yellow is the Besner blue. Now Besner blue is beautiful. It's a strong color because it has phthalo in it. Um, any blues that have phthalo in them are strong, meaning you need more yellow, okay? 
So uh, it's also cool. So we are now cooler and yellower. That is the Besner blue, which is a beautiful color. It's, it's got to be my new favorite. So this is Stevenson's turquoise with the nickel, which is a cool yellow, um, but more white. So now we're getting a, a cooler, beautiful spring green. And I'm going to bring the yellow in. Now this is Kama's, um, and I'm putting a lot more. I had a lot more yellow on my brush, but I have to use more of it because it's not quite as, doesn't have as much punch as Stevenson's did. So uh, I'm going to have to put more yellow out, heavens. Um, so this is, what is this one? Oh, this is Thalo Cerulean, which is just beautiful. I actually sent this to um, Kama to see if they'd make it, but they ignored me. Um, it's quite similar to the turquoise. Again, it has thalo in it. Um, I'm not one for pigment and pigment numbers and, and the whole science behind it. I just like, if the color is pretty, I, I like it. Okay. Um, but it does have thalo in it, so it's cooler. So this is real cerulean. And it is a, it's a cool blue and it's an opaque. It's a little bit darker, so we're getting um, a darker spring green. And these are spring because of the nickel yellow. Now you can see how this one, the, the blue gray does actually have a little bit of red in it. It's almost a very light mauve color. Um, so you can see how this one's quite dull. Manganese, now manganese is really, really cool. Trying to get my big head out of the way. So you can see that's that that's a really, really minty. And if I added white to this, you'd get that real, you know, 1950s mint green. Remember the appliances? <clears throat> and this is uh, cobalt, I think. So it's a little darker on the value scale. Again, still fairly cool. Then uh, this is uh, phthalo. Now really, really, really strong. So I'm just picking up a little teeny, weeny, weeny, little bit. And it, again, it's a bit there. See, I just picked up too much. See how overpowering that is? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and next one is ultramarine, old standby. Ultramarine, we should all own shares and you've got a really dark value there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's those ones. Now lemon is next. So this is lemon and I apologize. My lemon is kind of dry and hard. Um, so that is with the blue gray. So it's hotter because it is a more, um, um, I, I would almost call it the yellow on the wheel. I'm not a color wheel person, but it's a real yellow. Whereas mm -hmm. opposed to, it, it's, uh, I guess, cadmium yellow light. Okay, so lemon, we're still in the cool, right? So this one, the, the blue gray's got a little bit of red in it, right? So we're a little bit duller. So now we're gonna pull the lemon. And I, I apologize, my thing about this paper does, does absorb the oil, but it doesn't go through. Mm -hmm. um, going through a little bit but it, it won't go through and stain anything so it's it's great for teaching so here we have the besner blue number one and lemon yellow so you're getting a real hot spring green there almost artificially spring green so um and here we have the turquoise this is the stevenson's turquoise again really god my yellow so hard um, try not to make it too wet. Okay, and yellow and camas turquoise. So they're almost identical. Almost identical. The um, Stevenson's turquoise is a little bit lighter. That is phthalo cerulean, the Stevenson color and uh, with lemon. So now we're going to do lemon and, which is darker, 
but again, it's still a fairly hot green. Then we'll do lemon and uh, manganese. manganese. Now manganese is really strong. It's strong, but it's not strong. It has strong tinting power, but it is so transparent that if you start a painting with manganese, you could use half a tube and not even see it. Um, it that's how transparent it is, especially on panel. Um, on white canvas, it would be different, but I, I start with a panel ground, so. Uh, and this is the cobalt. So quite dark, but still cool. Clean my brush. And this is the thalo. So strong that I've now contaminated my yellow. Really, really strong and quite hot because it's a cool. Now I'll take a bit of lemon from over here and ultramarine. Mm -hmm. So ultramarine is darker. So you're getting more into that kind of hunter green color. You remember the 1980s in your kitchen? And this is uh, Naples yellow. This is Camas Naples yellow. So it is an earthy tone. It's got a lot of white in it with the blue gray. So you're getting a really uh, dull. Uh, yeah, I find mixing greens uh, use more yellow than the blue. Um, so that's a real um, light toned, earthy, dull color. So um, the color of dead grass almost. Um, and then we have Naples with Besner, which is a really nice, it's one I use a lot because it's a spring green, but it's not, an, it's not in your face. It's kind of like a nice sage color. So you can see the difference, a cooler yellow and now it's a slightly warmer yellow and it's earthier. And Naples yellow and turquoise which is another really nice color. These are the ones I use a lot of. Um, cooler. Mm -hmm. Now this is an opaque yellow and these are opaque blue. So I'm getting opaque colors. And this is the canvas turquoise. So almost the same. And this is the uh, phthalo cerulean. Again, we're still through, oops, that's dark. See, see how much you need a lot more yellow, eh? To get the, a real green, depending on what you wanna go, right? You can push it any which way. And this is the cerulean. <clears throat> so if you don't have, if you need a cool blue and you don't have any of these other fancy blues, cerulean is a good one to have on your palette. And so you can see how transparent this manganese is, right? So I'm putting more in because it's so transparent. So I had to add more yellow to that. That is the cobalt. So it's quite a bit darker. And it's a fairly neutral blue. I think if you were looking at your color wheel, cobalt is the blue of the blue. Am I wrong? And then there's thalo. You can see, I don't know if you can see the oil coming out of the thalo. There's a ring around. Um, and see how strong it is, eh? If I really want that to show up more. I've got to add a lot more white. So thalo is really strong, very overpowering. Um, I always say thalo is not, it's not for the faint hearted. You've got to be able to control it if you're going to use it. Like I said, I have just introduced it back into my palette because. Um, I have a hard time controlling it. And this is ultramarine and the Naples. So we're getting darker. And uh, this, is, this is an earth tone, so they're a little bit muddier. And they're muddier because they're an opaque as well. So now we're gonna go into, this is azo yellow medium, which is the same 
um, CAD medium and the blue gray. Oops, see now this one is so strong. So now we're getting a hotter yellow. Mm -hmm. Oops, should have started off with the yellow and a hot turquoise. Now, when I'm done with all these, um, then I'll add some white to them if they're not dry um, and some red so you can see what happens to um, push and pull them. And I mean, you don't have to memorize all these, right? Because, you know, after you do a few paintings, you'll get favorites. And those are the ones you're going to use. So you don't need to worry about the other ones. So this is the uh, turquoise and uh, almost identical, the two of them. They look different <laughs> beside each other, but when they're mixing, they're almost identical. Close enough that, you know, if you didn't have one, you could use the other. And this is the Thalo Cerulean. So hot. You, see, you can see how hot these greens are. And, uh, you know, for personally, I like cooler greens. You know, if anybody knows me, my greens are all blue. I don't paint green. I paint blue with a bit of yellow, which makes green. Um, that is the cerulean with the um, what do you call this color? Azo yellow medium. Um, so if you had azo yellow light, I think it's it's not quite as intense. Oops, my paint's getting really. Uh, it absorbs into this paper. That's the only issue. So this is the manganese with this hot yellow. And my yellow is very dry because I never use it. Certain pigments are oilier than other pigments. Um, opaque pigments tend to be um, drier. And this is cobalt. So quite a bit, quite hot. So if, I guess if you mix the uh, the cobalt and the primary green, you'd get like a, you know, your perfect color wheel green. I'm not a color wheel person. Never was. I didn't go to art school. I didn't even go to art class. Okay, so that, it's got a little bit of that phthalo in it, but the ultramarine. You can see how we're getting darker. And these are quite hot, real um, hunter green, eh? Um, and then this is the uh, dark, so yellow dark. So it's almost orange. And let's see what happens when we mix it with this color. So really, really dull. Mm -hmm. um, because this has got a bit of red in it. That's got a bit of red in it. So we're making almost a dirty brown. This one with the Besner. So that is the Besner and the dark, which is kind of a nice color. Uh, not nice enough for me to put the dark yellow back on my palette, but... So this is the turquoise and the dark. So the dark, when I say dark, what color is this color? Where are we? Deep, yes, deep, not dark, dark and deep. Um, so it's quite a hot green. It's very dry on my paper, sorry. So it's almost an orange color, eh? So you mix an orange and a cool blue. Little bit earthier, hotter, still fairly uh, springy like. So 
So when you're painting spring, the season of spring, your colors are going to be clearer, like up here, right? Um, mm -hmm. More intense, the hue. I think that's the terminology. Uh, that's almost the same. That's the uh, phthalo cerulean. And when you're painting fall, of course, your colors are dull. And this is the cerulean. Yes. So the cerulean is quite cool. And I'm mixing it with a hot yellow. So we're getting a real brownie green. Mm. Again, all opaques. So uh, manganese, which is a transparent. So we're getting a real hot green there. Um, because of the transparency of the uh, manganese. Manganese is, is does, does everybody know about real manganese? Is the heaviest of all the pigments. So um, in watercolor, if you did a wash, the manganese pigments would fall to the bottom and touch the paper. And any other color you put on top, would sit on top of the manganese. So I'm talking about the paint color, the pigment particles, right? But manganese is also 100% non-staining. So you could lift that color off after, after it's dry and go back to the white of the paper because it was non-staining and because it was the heaviest. So for snow painters, it was gold uh, because you could lift those highlights off of your snow. So we have, uh, that's the cobalt and the deep. So we have a real hot, um, dark uh, green here. This deep color is disgusting. Um, and now I'm gonna do the phthalo. Now in theory, because this is a hot yellow and phthalo is cool, we should get a dark, um, it's too strong, dark brownie, mucky, Kind of green. Um, cooler, see this has got a bit more red in it. So it's warmer. Now I could do the same test with different brands of paint and you get different results. The pigments don't actually, well the pigments can change. It depends if they're using real pigments or even not. Um, you see how hot that is. Uh, it depends where they come from. So if you're, if you're mixing your, um, pigments from dyes, like the quinacridones, uh, depends who the manufacturer that pigment is. If you're using natural pigments, um, it depends where those pigments are mined. So um, they can change. So that's why um, artists will become favorites with um, certain colors, brands. Um, okay, so this is the Indian yellow. Now I'll do a little test over here of Indian yellow with white. So you can see what happens to it when you hit it with white. See how orange it looks? And the more white you add, the yellower it gets. So it doesn't have a whole lot of punch until you add white to it. So you can see how hot it is. It is a transparent, so it's got a nice oily feel to it. Now I'm putting this dull blue with it that's got some red in it. So we're getting a hot, dull green. So this is the Indian yellow and Besner blue. Much Besner. Now I'm probably not mixing equal equal, right? That would be really hard to judge. So that's heavier on the Besner or on the yellow so because it's it's a transparent so it's got heavy tinting so we have a hot um light color not as fresh as these colors a little bit duller and the turquoise now it's kind of almost the same when you put it out as the um as the deep in value, but it's the transparency that makes it so interesting. Now, transparent colors are oily by nature. 
So you have to be aware of that with oil paint if you're doing, you know, your lean over, fat over lean thing. So this is the uh, turquoise again with the ultimate, or sorry, Indian yellow. It was Margaret Roseman that introduced me to Indian yellow in watercolor years ago. And Indian yellow used to be made by feeding mango leaves to cows in India. Um, so this is the um, thalo cerulean and the Indian yellow. So a hot green, a little bit darker, not as, um, as uh, brown as these because it's not quite as yellow, right? So if it, a cooler green has a bit of yellow in it, a warmer yellow has got a bit of red in it. So when you mix the three colors, you're gonna get more of a duller browner color. Duller browner, that's a technical term. Um, you know, so the quality of paint has improved dramatically to the point where, you know, I mean, you can varnish to protect a work, but for UV, I mean, pigments are almost, you know, completely um, UV stable now, right? Just because the, the pigments themselves are so much better than they used to be. So we have the manganese, which is a cool blue um, against this hot color. So it's, it's lighter uh, and that's just tinting power uh, because it's a transparent. It's probably not a color I would ever mix in a painting. So this is the cobalt, which is quite dark with that Indian yellow. So you can use Indian yellow to mix a dark green almost a black. And if I were to mix that like with more paint, more strength, and then throw in a bit of dark red, you would get a black and you would get a very lively black. So this is the um, phthalo. You can see how strong that is. I just grabbed too much of it. And this is probably not, look at how contaminated. This is why you have two different brushes. See my Color is contaminated here. Mm -hmm. But this is reading as almost black, but it's actually a very, very dark green. So when I have a color that's contaminated, um, this is paper, but this is my razor blade and I can scrape off the contaminated color. And I do that at the end of every painting day when I still have my clumps out. Um, so now it's clean. And so we have uh, Indian yellow and ultramarine. So it's a dark green, uh, not as dark as the, not as cool as the phthalo, but darker. So now you can see them a little bit more on the screen. Okay, so the next color is transparent orange. Do a little piece of transparent orange so you can see what it looks like when you hit it with white. And I apologize, my brush is getting dirty. This is what it looks like when you hit it with some white. Sorry, my brush is dirty, but normally it just jumps out and sings. Orange, which is again, a beautiful trend. You can see it on its own there. It's, it's beautiful. The transparent colors are gorgeous on their own. And, and because they're transparent, they're like stained glass. You cannot get uh, mud with them. Now, this is the blue gray and it's an opaque. So I'm mixing an opaque with a transparent, but you still don't get that mud color. What you get is an opaque with a little bit of glow to it. Then the transparent orange, and this is a gambling color. I don't think anybody else makes transparent orange. And this is the Besner blue. And I love these. When you put them in. So it's 
So there is the Besner blue and the transparent orange. Um, if anybody knows my work, you should be starting to see some of the greens that you would see in my paintings here. Or not. And turquoise. So darker because the value of the transparent orange is darker than these other ones. So every pigment has inherent value in it, um, which is probably why I don't use black. I use the um, value that's in the pigment. Um, and I can, I'll, I'll try and lift some of this out after I play around with them a little bit. Um, so that is the phthalo cerulean and the transparent orange. So we're getting a dark uh, green, but it's a little bit, it's not as hot up here. Well, no, it's hotter, but it's duller because it's got red in it. So it's a nice green. Some greens are not nice. Um, green is in green is everywhere. It's in people's skin tones. Um, so this is the cerulean with the orange and cerulean is a little bit cooler. So we're getting a really, really dark value now. I'm getting a little bit of glare on my piece of paper. So this is the manganese blue. Obviously I didn't need to squish out, squish out as much as I thought I did. Uh, so cool blue over orange. So we're getting like a brown color, um, but two transparents. So I don't know if you can see how it's almost, you can almost see through the layers and the, the paper reflects back underneath compared to this one. Do you see mm -hmm. the difference? Yeah. They're the same value. Um, but this one is just appearing lighter because the uh, light color of the paper is reflecting through. So something to keep in mind, if you paint on, oops, contaminating, if you paint on white gesso, right, you can use those transparents. I don't, I paint on board. So this is the transparent orange. It's gotta be one of my most favorite colors. I'm starting to use it more than the Indian yellow. And this is the cobalt blue. So almost a brown. If I threw more orange in here, it would go brown, dark brown, dirt. Dirt. Oh my God, they should make a paint color called Joe, Joe Dirt. Um, and you can't feel this, but because it's a transparent, it's, it's greasy. So my brush is flowing beautifully through this paint. It really moves nicely. So we have phthalo and the transparent orange. So we have an almost black, warm green here. And if I were to pull more orange in here, then we would have a warm dark green. If I pulled more blue in, we would have a cool dark. So you can adjust your temperatures by the ratio of paint that you're using. And then of course, by adding white. Now I don't add black to any of my paints for value, but I'm sure some people do out there. So we have that ultramarine and this now ultramarine is a little bit warmer and this warm. So we're getting quite a warm brownie color there. All right, so now we're getting into the reds. Now, if I mix the reds with the blues, we're going to get purples, right? So this is Quinn Red. Now, what I will do after with this is mix a bit of Quinn Red into these other greens. Now, I'm going to switch brushes for my blues, which probably won't matter because they're going to get dirty anyhow. So we have a real um, dull purple here. Dull purple. I should just use the other brush. Okay. And Quinn Red, you can see how strong it is. See what it's like on its own. There it is. Okay, it's almost like a fluorescent pink. 
here I'll do a little spot here of it all on its own and I'll add a little bit of white to it so you can see what it looks like when you mix white with it now my brush is dirty um, mm. yeah, but you can see how it goes uh, a pinky color and the Besner blue again some of my ones are getting dirty here so we're getting a nice uh, purple and again depending on ratio of pigments if you went more blue with this you would get uh, a bluer mauve and quin red and because it's a hot red with a cool blue we're getting a real deep cooler purple After a while, when you do this and you do this enough, um, it, it becomes second nature. You don't have to think about it as much. And uh, I always tell my students, you know, if, if you really, if you really want to be a good artist, um, you got to know your medium because it's only, it's so strong. I'm going at, now this is that wimpy camera turquoise that's not as strong as the, um, one from Stevenson's. If you really want to um, concentrate on your painting, know your medium, because if you know your medium, you no longer have to think. You don't have to think about what colors do what together and how they behave. Um, you'll just know. And that's when you can push that medium to do things it's never done before. So um, darker, cooler purple. All right, so that is the cerulean, which is cool, and uh, this red, which is a cool red. So we're getting a cooler dark purple here now. Um, quinacridone is, is uh, quinacridone red is slightly warm. I mean, cool, slightly, very slightly. Um, I like it because if I mixed it with Indian yellow, I would get a beautiful coral color. If I mixed mangani or sorry, um, magenta or alizarin crimson, because alizarin crimson has some blue in it. If I mix that with Indian yellow, I'm getting a dull color because it, they're just slightly warmer. Am I making sense? Yep. Okay. Uh, so that is the manganese, and that is the uh, quinacridone red, and it's, uh, I, you can't see it, but it's like layers of stained glass on here. It's just gorgeous. And it sings. It's like looking through layers of water. So quin red and cobalt. Heavier on the cobalt, because the quin reds, they have strong staining power. So that's a very dark, 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 warm purple. I mean, cool purple, sorry. Temperature of color is all relative to what's beside it, right? You can say it's cooler, but if you put it beside something that's cool, it's gonna be warmer, right? Right. right. So um, phthalo and quinacridone, so both transparents, uh, both fairly um, dark on the value scale and both transparent. So they're um, beautiful. Almost black, almost black, purple black. And if I brought a little bit of transparent red oxide into this, you'd get black because you're mixing your three colors. And that black is going to be a lot more interesting than black. In my honest opinion nobody ever listens to so so ultramarine and quinacridone red again very very dark so here's magenta they look almost the same but when you add white to them see if i can get a piece it's a real um purpley red it's very girly so depending on who you market is, a lot of floral artists will use them. Um, but if you put them in a lot of landscapes, um, 
you know, it, it jumps out. It's almost like a phthalo. You can tell when somebody's used magenta. Um, so I'm going to pull a bit of magenta in with this blue gray. And again, we're getting a hotter mauve. So it's pinker than the one above it. There's just slightly more yellow in the quinacridone red than there is in the magenta. And this is the Besner blue and the magenta. So pinker. Okay, so, and that is the turquoise. Now the magenta is so strong that I need to put more turquoise on here in order to get it where I want it to go. Okay, so this is the cerulean. So it's an opaque. So we've got a bluer, um, so cooler, dark purple. And again, it depends on your proportions of color. I've got, I'm picking up too much of this uh, red. So this is the cerulean blue. That's nice. I think cerulean blue is going to have to go back on my palette, which means my prices are going to have to go up. So uh, that's the quinacridone magenta, which is cool. This is the um, manganese, which is cool. Now, I don't know if you can see that. If I Nice thing about oil is you can pull colors over. Um, there's a beautiful royal purple in there. And that's the mixing of those two, right? And, and playing with your values, right? And in watercolor, they used to call it, um, what do they call it? Color shot or something? When you would wet your pages and drop color in to play around with your values, or sorry, your temperatures. And your value, well, no, temperatures. So that is the cobalt, more opaque. So um, phthalo and magenta, almost black, almost black. No. The trick is looking at the image that you're painting and thinking, okay, what do I need to mix those colors to get that image? Um, and, and what kind of feeling do you want the painting to give? Yes. And um, I mean, the, the ones that I did recently, that snow painting and then the Virchi soft thing, which I can bring my camera down after, um, are different um, greens, depending on the feeling you want to give to the painting. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is the transparent yellow oxide. This is the big one. So it is like that on its own. Here it is there, I'll mix it with a bit of white. So it's almost like raw sienna when you mix it with white. And because it's an earth tone, you get these wonderful earthy, uh, greens to it. Now the, the blue gray um, is very dull on its own and it's a bit cooler. So it, this is almost a um, baby ship. That's the technical term. Baby ship green. So this is the uh, green and the Besner blue number one. Um, and it's a spring green, but it's a little bit earthy. Look at the difference in that one and that one. Mm -hmm. And turquoise and transparent yellow. And these are all, there's your dark, there's that dark green. People see that on my, in my paintings all the time. I use a lot of transparent yellow oxide. I start all my paintings with it. Oops. Okay. 
And that is the turquoise again. Not much difference between the two of them. Too much paint. Now, when, you, when I go through that, you can, can you see how the, you can see the brush strokes on this? Mm -hmm. And that's the transparency. Uh, so this is the cerulean. So when I mix my dark greens in my paintings, the ones that you see all the time uh, is this thalo cerulean and transparent yellow oxide. Right there, dark warm green, but not this hot um, hunter green color. And cerulean. Is there anybody mixing along with me? So that's the cobalt, which is quite dark. Um, it's kind of boring. Cobalt's kind of a boring. But, but I mean, if you're, if you're going out plein air painting, it's a good staple to keep on your palette, right? Because you can push it and play with it. You know, as opposed to keeping all your favorite pre-mixed greens on. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the uh, manganese, which is cool and transparent yellow oxide. So a dark, cool green. Almost like Viridian, I think. I don't know. I don't own any green Viridian. And this is ultramarine. Now, ultramarine is a semi transparent. Um, so it's warmer version, but you can see how dark they are. Okay, so the transparent red oxide, which is the same as your burnt sienna. And it's a red, so it's going to be dull. So we're getting brown. Esner blue and transparent red. Now it's a red, but it's an earth red. So we're getting browns, right? Because when you mix an earth red with blue, you get brown. Now, what do browns have to do with greens? So when you're doing that foreground to ground your trees, right? Because trees have to be growing out of somewhere you could use the same colors in them. And yes, I'll throw some red in some of these other colors. Um, I'll do that. You guys can tell me what you want me to throw in and we'll see what happens. Because really that's what you do. You, should, you, uh, there's a, there's you, you play with color and you'll find some you like and some you don't like. So that's that turquoise and that red and it's a really dark brown but it almost has, it has warm undertones, which is the transparency coming through, I guess. I mean, this paper plays tricks too, because it absorbs some of the oil. So this is the Cerulean Genuine. Um, so this is the manganese and the transparent red. So it's a beautiful, dark, rich, there's a richness to the transparencies. If anybody's ever taken my workshops, this is a rubber doohickey. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to see, I'm going to pull it through some of these. No, it's not going to show. Um, some of these transparent colors, especially the transparent with the opaques. Some of, the, some of them are drying, and that's just the nature of the um, paint. So let's see if I can do this one. Out. So the... Okay, let me see if I can do this one. Ah, that's not working. Okay, it's just because they're, they're drying I'm there. I'm okay, so if I scrape, you can see that pink line through there. Can you see that yeah. pink line through there? Yeah. That's the that's the um, the staining of the quinacridone. So um, if you're doing a painting, you can um, uh, lift out. You can lift out with turpentine or your OMS, and and that staining color will have stained your surface. So you can play around with lines. Um, and this is great for getting um, distant trees or just overall texture without doing a heavy positive shape. It's much more subtle. So those little background branches um, or people in the distance or a little highlight on something, uh, lifting your color out and letting that underpainting show through is much more subtle and also much more interesting to the eye. There's that Indian yellow showing through. Yeah. Um, let's try the Indian yellow with the ultramarine. 
There's the oh. Indian yellow showing through. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Okay, so now um, let's play around a little bit. Tell me what you want me to mix with what. So if I'm, okay, I'll show you one of my favorite colors. I'm gonna do some over here. So my favorite darks, my favorite dark green is um, Thalo Cerulean, Ultramarine. And I get this beautiful, rich, um, royal blue turquoise color. You see that? Then I bring a little tiny bit of transparent red into that. And it's a really dark, cool blue. So I don't know if you can see that. Now it's very blue. It's, it's You're seeing it bluer than what I'm seeing. Um, oops, too much red. But that's the color that I would use for doing like a dark blue spruce in shadow. Um, okay, so I can, let's bring some white into some of these greens and see what happens. So um, again, some of these are drying, so you'll have to bear with me. So we get a really light green. They're not drying, the oil has seeped into the paper. Um, so mix that with, if you want a really hot, 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 hot green. And turquoise and white. You get that Eastery green there. Um, if I add white to one of these, let's do the transparent yellow and the manganese green. It's probably gonna be ghastly. That's not too bad. So there you go, it's kind of an earthy green. Now, if I add the white to this brownie color, it'll be ghastly. And then this blue up here that I made before, whoops, my brush is dirty. Um, if I add white to that, you get this kind of earthy. Um, now, if I mix this green gold, so this is the green gold up here. And this Besner blue is really nice in green gold. Ooh. It's kind of an acidic spring green. Ooh. You see that? Yeah, nice. Yeah, it is. It's very nice. And green gold. I didn't really leave a lot of room for green gold. I just ran out of room. Um, with cronacridone red. Some in so this is quinacridone red and green gold. So it's a dark, um, I don't know what color you'd call it. It's almost a, a, a magenta -y brown color. So it's a dull color. You add a bit of white to it and it does some interesting, very olivey color. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're doing portraits, of course, olive skin has, olive and black skin has a lot of green undertones, right? Um, whereas um, uh, Nordic um, is blue undertones. Mm -hmm. Not that I paint portraits. Now I'm not mixing green, <laughs> more paper towel. Um, I'll show you my favorite colors. Uh, quinacridone red here and orange okay quinacridone red try not to get dirty parts dirty parts and indian yellow now um indian yellow is one of those colors that you got to keep it clean as soon as it gets contaminated with the green it loses its oomph um so this is a beautiful dark coral color and I use that a lot in my paintings. Uh, if I add white to this, now my brush is dirty, but see how we're getting coral. So uh, if you're doing florals, heavier, whoops, heavier on the red. 
will give you that beautiful coral color. And then you just put a liner white through it. So very pretty. And of course, if you take these reds and mix them with your greens, see my greens have already set up. That's the paper. So sorry. So that's about it. So you can see how we've gone value and cool um, to darker. 